Praise the Lord. Amen. Happy Sabbath to everybody. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 35, beginning at verse 1. All the way down to verse 29. Genesis chapter 35. You got your scriptures? All right. Amen. Let's begin. Verse 1. And God, Yahweh, said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God, Yahweh. That appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau, thy brother. All right. Moses, who is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Levi, wrote the first five books of the scriptures called the Torah. Okay. So Genesis is the first book of the law written by Moses. And we're in chapter 35. And the Most High is saying unto Jacob. And you have to put God in context. Who is God? Because <laughs> people say God. But God has an identity. <laughs> yeah, he's the, he's the Most High of all the earth. He's Yahweh of all the earth. But he's also the Most High of a people. And everybody wants to say, oh, he's the God of everybody. Well, the scripture says he is the most high, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what the scripture says. And that's from Genesis to Revelation. It hasn't changed. So that's who, who, who the scripture says God is his, his Hebrew name is Yahweh. And the most high said unto Jacob, arise and go up to Bethel. So he's speaking to Jacob. Uh, Jacob is the son of e Isaac. Isaac is the son of Abraham. So he's speaking to specific people. He's not speaking to everybody else in the whole wide world. So people want to always say the scriptures, oh, it's about everybody. No, it's about a specific people. He told Jacob, arise and go to Bethel. And dwell there. And it's going to get into it. Bethel is the place where Jacob met the Most High. Where he met Yahweh. <laughs> it's a place of worship. And he made a landmark. An altar to remember where he met the Lord. That's why the Most High is telling him. Go back to Bethel. Get up and arise. Go to Bethel and dwell there. And make there an altar unto God. Unto the Most High. So the Most High is telling him, go and do this again. I got to talk to you about some things. <laughs> Arise, uh, go up to Bethel and dwell there and make there an altar unto the Most High. The place where I appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from, thy, from the face of Esau, thy brother. Jacob had received the blessing. <laughs> and Esau was upset, angry, mad. He wanted to kill Jacob. For receiving the blessing. Esau is the oldest. They're twins. Esau and Jacob. Esau is Edom. <laughs> He's still in the earth today. But you don't hear people talk about him. <laughs> and he was he was born first. The scripture said he came out hairy. And red like a garment. And he's still the same way today. But then the scripture said about Jacob. That uh, he came out holding on to Esau's heel. But it didn't describe how Jacob looked. Because <laughs> he looked like everybody else in the family. Esau was different. Scripture also said about them that one would be stronger than the other. And the older is going to serve the younger. So this is about Jacob and Esau. This is why Esau is, is mad or angry with Jacob. He wanted to kill him. And this feud, it hasn't ended. <laughs> It's still going on today. If Esau could, he would have killed Jacob, Israel, a long time ago. But the Most High won't allow it. So that's what you have to understand in the Scripture. The Scripture said God, the Most High, Yah, he loved Jacob but hated Esau. 
but people don't understand that. They want to say, oh, God is love. <laughs> he is, but he loves his people. And so people think because of these 501c3 corporations, pastors and preachers of the Antichrist church system, they don't tell you who Israel is. And people don't understand, and, and so they think God loves everybody. The Most High loves everybody, but he loves his people. And then they get to the New Testament, and they think, okay, it's about Gentiles. That's all out of ignorance. The scriptures are about the 12 tribes of Israel. <laughs> if you do not understand or know who Israel in the scriptures, you will be deceived. You will take the scriptures out of context, and 99%. Of all the people, all these religions, uh, Jesus, the, uh, the, the Messiah, Yahweh did not come to start any religion. He didn't come to start Christianity, Catholicism. Uh, he didn't come to start uh, any religion. He's not the God of Islam, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism. He's not the God of any religion. Judaism, he didn't come to start any religion. And so all these people of all these religions are deceived because they want to split the scriptures about these Gentiles that they don't understand who the scriptures are talking about. It's talking about the two kingdoms of Israel. They refer to the southern kingdom as Jews and they refer to the ten tribes of the northern kingdom that are scattered as Greeks or Gentiles. But most people don't understand that. They think Jews is all of Israel and Greeks is everybody else in the whole wide world. That just shows their ignorance. And these 501c3 pastors perpetuate that lie. And so the Most High is telling Jacob, he said, get up and go to Bethel. This is a place of worship. I want you to worship me there. I'm the God that appeared unto thee when you fled from thy brother Esau. Okay. Verse 2, then Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. <laughs> all right, so this is getting into the life of Jacob. The scriptures are written to, for, and about the chosen people of the Most High. It's our history. It's our heritage. It's, it's our culture. It's who we are as a people. It's not written to anybody and everybody. It's written specifically and only to the chosen people of the Most High. And so our life is a written epistle, a written and open book to the world. <laughs> but they can see it, but it's not written to them. That's what people don't understand. And even today, our names are written in the book of life. And everything that we say and do is, is being written down in the kingdom of heaven. There's nothing hid under the sun from the Most High. And so everything that went on in, in, in the life and family of, of, of the chosen people is written for all the world to see. But it's specifically to his chosen people for us it's our history it's our guidance our examples of how we should live and conduct ourselves before the most high and so the good the bad and the ugly everything is written down now jacob got all these children all these sons <laughs> and they're rambunctious they're gonna do some things they were they're in the land of the canaanites the the most high has promised them the land it's going to be y'all land, but we're amongst uh, people that are not us. We're strangers to them. <laughs> they don't, they're not, those, pe the people of Canaan are not the people of the Most High. But because we are around them <laughs> and in fellowship with them, <laughs> we're picking up on their habits and, and, and their customs and courtesy. And Jacob is aware of this. So he said, unto the people of his household and all that was with him. Put away the strange gods that are among you. I know what y'all been up to. And be clean and change your garments. We're getting ready to go worship. We're getting ready to go to church, y'all. <laughs> I want you to put away all them strange gods. Clean yourself off. Go, go take a shower. 
and change your garments. We're getting ready to go worship the Most High. Verse 3, and let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God, unto, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went. So he's explaining to them. We're getting ready to go to a place of worship where I met the Most High. And so this is I'm going to build an altar unto him of remembrance of what he has done for me, where he has brought me for, from when I first met him unto now, how he's protected us and watched over us and kept us. <laughs> he's not forsaken us. Who answered me in the day of my distress. And all life is about distress. You're going to have some hard times. But the Most High is with His people. He keeps us in the way that we go. <laughs> a lot of times we bring all this distress upon ourselves by not obeying the scriptures. But at this time, <clears throat> that's just life, a part of life. You're gonna, the scriptures say, all that shall live godly shall suffer persecution. And so when Jacob was living for the Most High. When he met the Most High, he was going through persecution. Even when he received the blessing from his father Isaac, Esau wanted to kill him. And so Jacob is explaining to his family, this is where we're going. We're going to, to commune with the Most High to worship him. I'm going to build an altar. He answered me in my distress when I was with him in the way, was with me in the way that I went. So he's giving his testimony of how the Most High has always been with him and protected him. Verse 4, And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which they had in their hand, and all their earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. And so all the sons of Jacob, and I guess and his daughter too, and all the other people, that was with him, his servants, they all gave Jacob their strange gods that they had in their hand, all the customs and courtesies that they had picked up in the land of Canaan, hanging out with the people, just, you know, being influenced by their surroundings, their environment, and earrings <laughs> that was in their ears, whatever style and fashion of the day, they was trying to adapt, same way it is today, we trying to fit in where we don't belong. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the land was ours, but we we was trying to fit in to be like the people of that land, of the land of Canaan. Same the way it is today. We're in the land of our captivity. <laughs> but we trying to fit in and assimilate unto the people that has us in captivity. Be like them, talk like them, act like them, look like them. <laughs> uh, picking up strange gods, doing stuff. Every a hundred percent. I ain't gonna say a hundred percent, but ninety nine percent of the things that we do is 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 pagan. All these birthdays and holidays and New Year's and Easter, uh, Christmas, all this stuff is pagan, and we hold on to it. Valentine's Day, Columbus Day, you name it. Memorial Day. All these holidays, birthdays, everything is pagan. But we hold on to all of that instead of holding on to the word of God. So he said, put away all these strange gods. What's a strange God? A strange God is anything that you put before the most high. <laughs> and so a lot of us are putting strange gods before the most high. The Most High, Yahweh, has to be first in our life. Not second, <laughs> but all these things we put before the Most High. Even these cell phones and technology and stuff that we have. Anything that you put ahead or in priority above the Most High is a strange God. And that's what they were doing. And these cell phones is in your hand. It's a strange God. <laughs> You need to put down them cell phones and pick up the word of God and study. <laughs> Jacob said, put away them strange gods. So, and, and they had earrings. They were just trying to mix in. Quit trying to mix in with the world. You're in the world. 
but you're not of the world. Quit trying to mix in with the world. And Jacob hid them under the oak, which was by the Shechem. He said, well, they're going to want them when they get back. <laughs> if they get back, Jacob was just was following the most high. He said, well, I'm going to just put them here. So that's where he put them, under the oak. Verse 5, and they journeyed, and the terror of God, Yahweh, was upon the cities that were around about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. So, they headed up and moved them out. <laughs> all the twelve sons of Jacob and, and Dinah, his daughter, and all the folks that was with them. They, they they journeyed. They wouldn't they was packing up. They didn't stay in this place anymore. They was moving out to go worship the most high. That's how they moved around. And scripture says the terror of God, Yahweh, the most high, was upon the cities that were around about them. Well, one thing they heard about what Simeon and Levi had done unto the people that uh, violated a defiled Dana. <laughs> and they're like, we ain't messing with them. And so the Most High put the fear of him, the fear of God in them, and they didn't mess with the sons of Jacob. They did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. They, they oh, that's God's chosen people. And that's how we are, even to this day. Even though we're in the land of our captivity and we're scattered, Especially the southern kingdom of Judah. We're scattered the furthest into all the earth. And the ten tribes of that are scattered. The Most High is still a part of our life. Whether we acknowledge it or not. And he's watching over us. Because he's coming back for us. We're his people. He hasn't forsaken us. That's what this scripture says. But a lot of people get into the New Testament. Because they're ignorant. And they don't understand it's about the two kingdoms. Oh, God forsake Israel because they, 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 Israel forsook Jesus. They didn't believe. Just taking the scriptures all out of context. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But the scripture doesn't end right there. It says, but as many as did. So who did? His own. It's still talking about his own. But as many of his own as did, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. <laughs> But people take the scripture out of context and say all of Israel forsook God, rejected Jesus. That's not true. If he, everybody rejected him, he wouldn't have had disciples. <laughs> and so all these people that was in Canaan, they feared the sons of Jacob. They saw what Simeon and Levi had done. They're like, we better not mess with these people. And so even today, the Most High has put the fear of him in, in these people. They know exactly who we are. The problem is. We don't know who we are. <laughs> That's why you need to know who you are. I'm telling you. When, when you acknowledge who you are in the most high. Things change. And the world look at you a lot different. <laughs> but the problem is. Us. Ourselves. Who are the people of the most high. 99% of us, or maybe 90% of us, are still ignorant and don't know who we are. I'm trying to wake you up telling you, look, you're Israel. <laughs> you have the 12 tribes of Israel. And everybody that's been scattered in captivity through those slave trades, most of you are of the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. So we're Jews. That's who we are. We need to learn to walk in that identity. Of being a son of God. That's who we are from Genesis to Revelation. There's power in knowing that we're his people. But you've been lied to. They call you whatever they want to call you. Where we've been captive, led, led into captivity. Oh, y'all just Africans. You're just African Americans, Negroes, uh, black. <laughs> they don't want to acknowledge us as who we are. But a lot of them know who we are. But the problem is, it's us. We slow. The scripture says it will be told to you. And even though it's told to you, you still won't be won't believe. And that's the same way it is now. That's in Habakkuk. Habakkuk. I'm telling you who you are and some of you still don't believe. 
verse 6. So Jacob came to Luz, which is in the land of Canaan, that is Bethel, he and all the people that were with him. So all, they, they headed up, came into Luz, in the land of Canaan, the promised land, the, the land that the Most High promised to Abraham, Isaac, and now he's promising it to Jacob. This is our land. It's a lot bigger than that land over in there called the nation of Israel, a nation state called Israel. Those people are not God's chosen people, but the world since 1948 acknowledges them as the Most High's chosen people, but they are not. The scriptures say that they are of the synagogue of Satan, that they say they are Jews and they do lie. They're, that's why they call themselves Jewish. You ask them, what tribe are you from? Like, I don't know. I'm just Jewish. Jewish means a religion. Jewish is a religion. That's why they call themselves Jewish. They know that they're not Jews, so they say that we're, they're Jewish. But the world calls them Jews, but they're not Jews. <laughs> they're Ashkenaz, Khazarians, Japheth, Gentiles, and Edomites that have taken over that land by fraud and deceit. And they fighting over it. And the land is a lot bigger than that. Even the Palestinian people. They're not God's chosen people. But they want to say, oh, it's our land too. <laughs> the land is a lot bigger than that. But all of that is the land of Canaan. That belongs to the Most High's chosen people. And when Yahweh Shai comes back, he's bringing us back to this land. That's where he's going to establish the kingdom of heaven. That is called Bethel, a place of worship. Now you can worship, Jesus told the woman at the well, you can worship anywhere. <clears throat> but during this point in time, Jacob is worshiping where he met the Lord. This is important to him. He said, well, the, the, I, met the, I met the Most High here. We got to go back here. I got to talk to him. <laughs> and the Lord, the Most High told him to go to Bethel. So this is what he's doing. He's being obedient to the Spirit of the Most High. He and all the people that were with him. So they're, they're lining up, obeying Jacob, doing what J Jacob told them to do. They're not rebelling against him. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. <clears throat> Verse 7, And he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel, because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. So he built an altar. An altar is a place of remembrance. A place where you remember where you met the Lord, the Most High, where he showed up in your life. And you want to mark this spot. And you worship the Lord. You give thanks and praise and honor. And this is what Jacob did. He built an altar. That's what an altar is. And now you got these 501c3 corporations with these buildings, they call churches. They're just a building, but they call them churches. If you're going to call them anything, they should have been called synagogues. But now, now they can't call them that. Then you'll figure out who you are. So they call them churches, these buildings. And then they have the nerve to say, okay, this is an altar. Come up to the altar, everybody. That's not an altar. <laughs> Jacob built an altar. An altar is the place where he met the... He, he built an altar where the Lord spoke to him. That's the same thing that Abraham and Isaac did. This is the same thing Jacob is doing. An altar is the place where the Most High met them and talked to them. And they worshiped the Most High. And, and, and so they marked it so they can remember where the Most High talked to them, where they were. He called the name, name of the place El Bethel. He gave it a name so that he could remember the place where he was when the Most High appeared unto him and talked to him. Because the, their God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. And so this is why it's important to remember what the Most High has done in your life. All those things that he's done, the, you have to remember that. Those are the altars of your life. Will you call on the name of the Most High and say, thank you for all the things that you've done, how you delivered me out of this situation and this situation. That's when you worship the Lord. You're giving thanks for all the things he's done and he's doing in your life. Go back to those altars where the Lord met you. Verse 8, but Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died and she was buried beneath Bethel under an oak. 
and the name of it was called Alam Bakai. So uh, Isaac's uh, wife, Rebecca, she had a nurse, and apparently uh, the nurse's name was Deborah. And when she died, they buried her beneath the, the oak in Bethel. And it was called Alon Baku. Baku. Verse 9. And God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Pandanaram and blessed him. And so after Jacob had served his uncle Laban for 20 years, the Most High appeared unto him again when he left Pandanaram and blessed him. And so Jacob, he's remembering all the times that the Most High has showed up in his life and when he, what the Most High did. Again, God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's not the God of everybody. <clears throat> People don't like to say that, but that's the truth. That's the scriptures. That's who God is. You want to say, no, he's the God of everybody. No, he's not. Verse 10, And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And so this is where Jacob met the Most High again. The Most High showed up. Jacob was going through some things. He was troubled. <laughs> he like, I got to talk to the Most High. He got to bless me because I don't know what's ahead of me. I don't know what my brother Esau is planning. <laughs> the Lord, you got to talk to me. Talk to me. <laughs> and so there, the Most High changed Jacob's name. God said unto him, that name is Jacob. That name shall not be called any more Jacob. But Israel shall be thy name. He said, like a prince, you have power with God and man. And he called his name Israel. The Most High established himself as the God of Israel, as the Holy One of Israel. And he established Israel as his chosen people. That's exactly who he is. He is the Holy One of Israel. We're, we're, that's who we are. We're, the, we're his people. We belong to him. <laughs> that's why people don't like to talk about Israel in the New Testament. Because they know who Israel is. But they don't want to tell you. The, 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 the ruling class, they know who Israel is. They know it's not the people over in the land. It's, they know that Israel is the people that's in captivity. That's why they put us in captivity. The, the ruling class, Jesus said, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. The ruling class are the Gentiles of the world. The, the, the Japhet Gentiles and the Edomites and the uh, Ashkenaz, the people that's occupying the land called the nation of Israel. They're Japhet Gentiles. They're Ashkenaz Khazarians. So they're Japhet Gentiles and then Jacob's brother Esau. Edom. They're the ruling class in the world today. And they know exactly who we are. <laughs> but they have stolen our identity. <laughs> They're perpetrating. And the world thinks that they are us. But we don't know who we are. And so the Most High, He said, Israel shall be thy name. That's who we are. We're Israelites. That's why we're Hebrew Israelites. I put this in here just to show you in Isaiah 43 and 1. But now thus says the Lord that scattered thee. All of the twelve tribes of Israel, but especially the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. You need to understand this. This is the theme of the scriptures. If you don't, you don't understand the scriptures. All of the twelve tribes of Israel are scattered. But thus says the Lord that scattered thee, O Jacob, all of Israel, and he that formed thee, O Israel, is one and the same. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Israel is a 12-member nation, 12 tribes. Fear not. He's telling us the same thing. Don't be afraid, for I have redeemed thee. 
He didn't say he redeemed everybody else in the whole wide world. He redeemed Israel. That hasn't changed. It's still the same way today. But when you get to the New Testament, it's still about Israel. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. The rest of the world is not his. He don't know him. That's why Jesus, Yahweh is going to say, I knew you not. People are going to come unto him, well, we did this in your name and that in your name. He's like, I don't know you. I never knew you. Who are you? He only knows Israel. We're his chosen people. He said, thou art mine. I've chosen you. I created thee. That's all he knows is Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. Even though we're scattered, he's still our father, our protector. He's still the God of Israel, the Holy One of Israel. He's not the God of everybody else. Verse 11, And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. And so the Most High is testifying unto him. He said, this is who I am. I'm the almighty creator of heaven and earth. I'm the almighty God. I want you to be fruitful, and I want you to multiply. Nations and a company of nations is going to come forth from out of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. So the Most High is telling them, this is what's going to happen. I'm establishing, the same way I established my covenant with Abraham and Isaac, I'm establishing the same covenant with you. He told Abraham and Isaac, unto thy seed, give I this land. Your seed is going to be blessed. The same way I'm blessing you, Abraham, Isaac, I'm going to bless your seed. This seed is Jacob. This seed is Israel. This seed is all the 12 tribes of Israel, a nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come up out of thy loin. So it's all about God's chosen people. You got to keep the scriptures in context. Verse 12, and the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee, I will give it, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. The Most High keeps his promises. He doesn't change. He started with Abraham and Isaac and now Jacob. And he's going to finish with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> when people get to the New Testament, again, they see Gentiles and they think, oh, it's about everybody else now in the world. That's a lie. Y'all are ignorant. Go back, restudy, research the scriptures. It's still about God's chosen people. Abraham, Isaac, and now Jacob whose name he has changed to Israel. He said, to thee I will give this land and to thy seed. After thee will I give the land. All the land that they call the, the Middle East <laughs> is the land of Canaan. That's why they call it the Middle East. They don't want you to remember that it's the promised land. <laughs> but it is. And when the Most High, when Yahweh Shai comes back, that's where he's going to gather and bring us back to that land that was promised to us. Verse 13, and God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. And so again, this is why Jacob went to this place. He had to talk to the Most High. The, Lord, the Most High told him, go to Bethel. I want, to, I want you to come there to worship me and build an altar and I will bless you. So that's what he did. He talked to him. He blessed him. This is where we meet the Lord. We meet the Lord at the altar, the altar of remembrance. That's why the Lord always told us, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Today is the Sabbath. It's one of the commandments. We're supposed to remember it to keep it holy. So all these places, people going to, to so-called church on Sunday, you're not remembering the Sabbath and you're not keeping it holy. The Sabbath is the day of remembrance. It's a day of altar, of rest unto the Lord. <laughs> we have to keep the Sabbath. And so the, 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 the ruling class, the, all these religions, Catholicism, Christianity, <laughs> have changed things around. That's why the scripture says, I'm going to send them a strong delusion. All these religions are a strong delusion. All of them. Christianity is a strong delusion. Catholicism is a strong delusion. Judaism 
is a strong delusion. Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, all of them are strong delusions. And all the 12 tribes of Israel is caught up in all these religions. The Most High, Yahweh Shai, don't have anything. Jesus don't have anything to do with any of these religions. He's coming back for a people. His chosen people. Verse 14, And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone. And he poured a drink offering thereon, and he poured oil thereon. Alright, so Jacob is remembering again what the Most High has done for him. He's marking the spot as, as, as he worshipped the Lord. He set up a pillar, a stone. <laughs> he said, the Most High appeared to me again and talked to me. I got to remember this. So he poured a drink offering. Of course, they were drinking wine. They didn't say that, but he poured the drink offering on the stone and he poured oil on the stone to remember, to mark it because the Most High had appeared unto him and talked to him. And so this is what we have to do when the Most High speak a word in our life. That's an altar where we worship the Lord and remember what the Most High has done for us. Verse 15, And Jacob called the name of the place where God spake with him, Bethel. So he gave it a name. And that name was Bethel. It's a place of worship. It wasn't no building. <laughs> he didn't build a building and call it a church. <laughs> it's a place. But it wasn't no building. He said, well, a building is a place. Yeah, but these buildings are high places. They're not the same thing. These buildings, they're, they're religious institution of the state. All these 501c3 corporations are institutions of the state. They get their authority from their state. That's why they take tithes and offerings from you. They're not authorized to do that from the Most High, but the state gives them that authority, and so that's why they do it. But you don't know any better. You think you're serving the Lord, giving them your tithes and offerings. They're, mer they're making merchandise of you. You don't owe them a penny. They bought those buildings of their own accord. The Most High... Yahweh Shai, Jesus, don't have anything to do with those buildings. They're religious institution. He don't have anything to do with religious institution. They gave them a name and all this stuff, and you think you serving the Most High. Those things are religious institutions. That's why he was telling the woman at the well, look, it ain't about the building. It ain't about being in Jerusalem or in this mountain. <laughs> He's looking for true worshipers to worship him in spirit and in truth. Keep the Sabbath. Jesus said, you love me, keep my commandments. The Sabbath is part of the commandment. This Sunday is not the Sabbath. I don't care what your 501c3 corporation, pastors, preachers, and teachers of the Antichrist church system tell you. Sunday is not the Sabbath. You're not worshiping the Lord, the Most High, when you go to these places. You, you Those are the high places. Synagogue of Satan. Come out of her, my people. <laughs> They're going to be destroyed. And if you're in there, you're going to be destroyed with them. Verse 16. And they journeyed from Bethel, and there was but a little way to come to Ephrath. And Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. And so as they journeyed from Bethel, they was moving toward Ephrath, and Jacob's wife, Rachel, she was pregnant, and uh, she, she was about to give birth, and the labor was really hard. Uh, it may have been something to do with, you know, doing the traveling, and it was too much for her. But nevertheless, uh, when the baby, is, when it's time to come, it's time to come, so. The baby was about to be born, but the labor was very hard for Rachel. Verse 17, And it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. So the midwife was administering uh, the birth for her and encouraging her while she was in labor and said, oh, this is going to be okay, Jake, uh, uh, Rachel. 
you're going to have this son. Yeah, he, you're going to have him. He's going to be all right. And so this is what the midwife was encouraging Rachel when she was in labor, giving birth to her son, which is called Benjamin. Verse 18, and it came to pass as her soul was in departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. And so as Rachel was giving birth to Benjamin, she passed away. And she called Benjamin Benoni, but Jacob called him Benjamin. Rachel called him Benoni, but Ra uh, Jacob called him Benjamin. And so that's what his name is. He's Jacob's last born son. Verse 19, And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. And so Rachel, uh, she has been given the monarchy of all as the mother of all the 12 tribes of Israel because she was Jacob's chosen uh, wife. I mean, he, he married Leah also, but he really wanted to marry uh, Rachel. Rachel was the favorite. So the scripture talks about uh, Rachel's children. She Ra Rachel weeping for her children because they are not. And so uh, you see the reference to Bethlehem because when the Most High, Yahweh Shai, Jesus, was born, uh, fair, uh, Herod, King Herod, uh, the, 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 the wise man told King Herod, a, a king is born. And Herod, well, who is this king? And the, the wise man was telling them who, who the king was, that we was being born in Bethlehem. And Herod, well, I'm the king. <laughs> Ain't no king going to be born here. And so Herod put out a, a, a proclamation, a declaration, to kill the firstborn uh, because he didn't want there to be any other king. And a prophecy went forth that uh, about Rachel, her children, Rachel crying because her children was not, because Herod killed the firstborn. And so this is why they mentioning Bethlehem. The, all the scriptures are connected from the Old Testament to the New Testament. That's why you got to study both and you got to make that connection. The scriptures are written in context. And if you don't understand the context, then you're going to take the scriptures out of context. Verse 20, And Jacob set a pillar upon her grave, that, that is the pillar of Rachel's grave unto this day. And so, Jacob marked the spot where Rachel had passed away. He put a pillar upon her grave. And even unto that, this day, you can find Rachel's grave near Bethlehem. Verse 21. And Israel journeyed and spread his tent beyond the tower of Edar. And so he kept journeying forward. Uh, the scripture ref ref refers to him as Israel. <laughs> and so that's who we are. We are Israel. We are a people. We're not a religion. We're the 12 tribes of Israel. Each tribe has a name. We're of the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah, or the southern kingdom of Judah, that encompasses Benjamin, were called Jews. That's who the Jews were. People think Jews is all 12 tribes of Israel. Jews is only the southern kingdom of Judah. That's who the Jews are. The rest of the 10 tribes that were scattered were not called Jews. They were called Israel. When, they, when, when Solomon was king, Israel was divided into two nations, the, the, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And the northern kingdom was called Israel with ten tribes. But the southern kingdom was called Judah with two tribes. And so the southern kingdom were called Jews. But the ten tribes of the northern kingdom were called Israel. But when they sinned, they were no longer referred to as Israel. So in Paul's writing, 
in the epistles and in the book of Acts, you see reference to Jews and Greeks and all these other places, Corinth and Ephesus and Galatians and Colossians and Samaria, all these places, they're talking about the ten tribes, uncircumcised and circumcision. They're using these two monarchies to denote the two kingdoms of Israel. But if you don't study the scriptures, you don't know that Israel was divided into two kingdoms. And so when you get to the New Testament, that's why a lot of people are ignorant. They don't know that they're referring to the two kingdoms of Israel. So Israel journeyed, and he spread his tent beyond the tower of Edar. And so as he kept journeying forward, he saw this tower of Edar. And that's where he spread his tent, where he dwelt there. Verse 22, And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. All right, again, this is getting into the life, the lifestyle, everything that has been said and done. When you're in the Lord, when you're in the Most High, our lives are open book. And since they're the fathers of us, everything was written down for an example so that we don't make the same mistake. Our life is an open book. It is still being written today. The scriptures are still being written. That's why we have to obey the scriptures, obey the word of God, obey the commandments. And so this is what happened with the first son of, of Jacob called Reuben. He lay with Bilhah. Bilhah was one of Jacob's concubines. Uh, I think he was the concubine of, of, uh, of Rachel. No, Leah. And so it doesn't get into the details of what happened or why it happened. It just tells you the result. <laughs> he lay with Bilhah. And Bilhah is his father's concubine. That's what happened. People want to speculate about what happened. It doesn't matter. That's what he did. <laughs> he shouldn't have done it. But that's life. A lot of times we shouldn't do what we should. We should. We shouldn't do what we we know better to do. But that's why the Most High had to come because we couldn't always obey. The law has always been. It was written down specifically for us and to us. But even before it was written down, we knew better. <laughs> And it said, J Israel heard it. He knew what had happened. And so this is being written and, and, and given to us for a reason and for a purpose. And the reason and purpose is this. Reuben is J Jacob's firstborn, Israel's firstborn. Uh, the rulership of authority should go to the firstborn. But this is what happened. <laughs> so it knocked him out of contention as being the... The person that follows rule after Jacob deceit. And it was all prophesied. So all of this stuff that's happening, that's why it, it, it's happening the way it's happened. And so it didn't go to Reuben. And also uh, Simeon and Levi, what they did, they knocked them out of the running <laughs> to be successor to Jacob when they took took out the people over in Canaan for defiling their sister, Dana. <clears throat> and so that means that J uh, Judah was the next in line. And so we're going to start getting into uh, the life of Judah. And not, He didn't live a perfect life either, but <laughs> I guess it was just enough that he could be the chosen person. And so that's why this scripture is being brought out. To show you that this is what happened. Why Reuben is not selected. Because he lay with his, his father's concubine. So that. If you read the Leviticus. The book of Leviticus. It, it tells you about all this stuff happening. And this this happened. Earlier in the scriptures. People don't understand the scripture. They take them out of context. But this happened with Noah. Uh, Noah had three sons. Shem, Ham. And Japheth. And. Ham uh, ended up sleeping with Noah's wife. 
And you got to go back and research the scriptures. It's there. And the, the son that was born was Canaan. <laughs> and so that's why Noah cursed Canaan. He said, curse be Canaan, a servant of servant. But he didn't curse Ham. He cursed the son that was born. And so that's why I say the law has already been, they already knew what was right and what was wrong. But apparently it doesn't say that a child was born from this, this encounter, this sexual relation between Bilhah and Reuben. But it, it, they want you to understand this happened. And so in the scriptures, it's, it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Good, bad, and ugly. And everything in between. But the Most High still loved us and we still his people. And so it says Jacob has 12 sons. And all these 12 sons are the 12 tribes of Israel. And when you think of tribe, you think of tribes in Africa, you think of tribes with the Indians, that's who we are. We're a tribe. <laughs> but they don't want us to remember who we are. Verse 23, the sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, who we just talked about, Simeon and Levi, who took that vengeance out in their own hand against the men that, the men that, uh, defiled their sister Dana, and then Judah. And so Leah had four sons, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. And then she had Issachar and Zebulun. So she had a total of six sons. But the rulership is going to go to Judah. Verse 35, uh, verse 24, uh, the sons of Rachel, Joseph and Benjamin. Now, the scripture said Jacob loved Rachel. Rachel was his favorite favorite wife. That's the one he really wanted to marry. So she had two sons. Joseph was born first, and then Benjamin was born, and she, she passed away after Benjamin, Benjamin was born. Now, Joseph is Jacob's favorite son, and we're going to get into the life of Joseph also. And the scripture talks about Joseph a lot. He's a type of Christ. He's a type of Messiah about what he went through. And we'll see that in the scriptures. Verse 25, Genesis 35 and 25. And the sons of Bilhah, uh, Rachel's handmaid. So that was, uh, that was Rachel's handmaid that uh, Reuben slept with, Bilhah. Was it Bilhah? I think it was Bilhah. Uh, Rachel's handmaid, uh, Bilha had Dan and Naphtali. Those were her sons. So each each handmaid had sons also. Now we're getting into verse 36. Zilpah, uh, she's Leah's handmaid, verse 26. And so uh, Zilpah had Gad and Asher. So those are the 12 sons of Jacob. These are the sons of Jacob which were born to him in Pandanaram. And so all these sons are the, uh, are the 12 tribes of Israel. So when you get to the book of Revelation, it talks about the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 gates, with the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. It ain't changed. The kingdom of heaven is for Israel. And so your pastors, your 501c3 corporations, Pastors, preachers, and teachers of the Antichrist church system are, are lying to you. It's not about everybody else. When they say Gentiles, they're just talking about the two kingdoms. Jews and Gentiles are about the two kingdoms of Israel. It's not about everybody else. Verse 27. And Jacob came unto Isaac his father, unto Mamre, unto the city of Arba, which is Hebron where Abraham and Isaac sojourned. And so as he was traveling, he came to the place where his father Isaac was, Mamre, to visit his father. His father was getting ready to pass away. And so he came unto Isaac, his father, in Mamre, the city of Arba, and, which is Hebron. And so this is where Isaac and Abraham sojourned. But Jacob, after he left, he really didn't live around Abraham or Isaac anymore. 
He didn't get that far to, to live near them. Verse 28. And the days of Isaac were a hundred and four score years. So uh, Isaac lived a hundred and eighty years. <laughs> That's how long Isaac lived. And the Lord was with Isaac. He blessed Isaac. Isaac had two sons. Esau and Jacob. Isaac loved Esau. <laughs> He wanted to bless Esau. He thought he was blessing Esau. <laughs> but he realized, oh, I blessed Jacob. And then when Esau came in, like, okay, he blessed me. He like, what? Who are you? <laughs> he said, I'm Esau. He said, well, too late. I already blessed Jacob. <laughs> He's taking away your blessing. <laughs> and so that's why Esau was mad and angry with Jacob and wanted to kill him. Verse 29, and Isaac gave up the ghosts, and died, and was gathered unto his people, being old and full of days, and his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. <laughs> now they talk about Isaac, they say, okay, this is the time that he passed away, he was, he, he, he gave up the ghosts, he was gathered to his people, he was full of days, and then they talk about Esau and Jacob buried him, <laughs> and it, I, I think about how how we are as a people. A lot of times we don't gather together until somebody pass away. Well, you know, a lot of times we don't live that close to each other. And so that may be a case. But a lot of times we're in the same place and don't even visit one another. But that's how we are as a people. There's strife and bickering. And that's going to be until the end of time between Jacob and Esau as a people. And so even to this day, we're, we're, we're that way. And even amongst us, ourselves as Jacob, as Israel, we're bickering and fighting and don't come together until somebody pass away and we barely speak and then go again our separate ways. We'll be, we'll be cordial, I guess, for the moment. After the funeral, okay, it's back to normal. All right, well, thank you for listening. See you next time. Shalom.